Let's see how to calculate the curved surface area as well as the total surface area of a cone. On the right hand side of the screen here you can see that I've written two formula. The first is for the curved surface area of a cone and the second is for the total surface area. And let me start by discussing these two formula for a minute. In the first one we're speaking of the curved surface area. And this formula states that the area is equal to pi times r times l, where r is the radius of the disk at the base of the cone, and l is known as the slant height. And as you've probably already noticed, this l appears in both of these formula, and it's quite important to really picture what it is. So let me make a quick sketch of a cone here, something looking like this. There we go. As I was saying, r is the radius of the disk at the base of the cone. So that would be the radius I'm adding right now in blue. That's r. L, on the other hand, is known as the slant height, and it's equal to this slanted length that I'm hovering over right now. And so if I were to annotate this diagram, I'd draw something like this. L is this length right there. And so hopefully it's quite clear from my diagram here that the slant height and the height are not the same thing. Indeed, the height of the cone would be this length here that I'm drawing in green, and I would call that h for height. Okay, so this is the formula for the curved surface area, which is the area that wraps itself around up here. It doesn't include the base of the cylinder. The total surface area, on the other hand, is equal to pi r squared, or pi times r squared, plus pi times r times l. Now pi r squared is the area of the disk or circle at the base of the cone. Pi r l on the other hand, well that's the curved surface area we just saw. And it's worth mentioning that this second formula, which I'll copy here, that's a equals to pi r squared plus pi r l, can also be written as pi r times r plus l written in parentheses. Indeed, from this line to the next, I've placed pi times r as a factor to the entire expression. So if you come across this formula, don't be alarmed, it's the same as this one. Okay, all of that being said, let's see how to actually calculate the curved surface area, as well as the total surface area, for the cone we have on the left hand side here. This cone has a height equal to 12 centimeters, as well as a radius at the base, equal to 5 centimeters, and it has a slant height which isn't given, which is called capital L. And so for the sake of being consistent with our formula, I'll rename this lowercase l. There we go. Okay, well let's start by calculating the curved surface area. Curved surface area. Well, let's see, we know that that's equal to pi times r times l. So I can already write that formula, a equals to pi times r times l. And now we know what r is, indeed that's the radius at the base, so that's 5. And in fact I could already write that, that's equal to pi times 5 times l. But at this stage we don't know what l, the slant height, is equal to. And here's how to find it. We're going to use our knowledge of right angle triangles. Indeed, consider the right angle triangle I'm drawing right now. I'm leaving the center of the base up to the top of the cylinder, like so and the slant height would be the length of the red line segment I'm drawing right now. There we go. That's L. Now the triangle I've just drawn is a right angle triangle, and hopefully you can picture it, it's the triangle I'm shading right now. Looking at this right angle triangle, we know its height, indeed, that's 12 centimeters, and the length of this base here equals to 5 centimeters. So if I make a copy of that underneath here, we're looking at a right angle triangle looking something like this. We have our right angle here, a base of 5 centimeters, and a height of 12 centimeters. And we want to find L. Well, thanks to Pythagoras' theorem, we know that the square of the hypotenuse, so that's L squared, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. In other words, we can find L by stating that L squared equals to 5 squared plus 12 squared. So L squared equals to 25 plus 144. In other words, L squared is equal to 169. 
Finally, applying square roots to both sides of this equation leads to L equals to the square root of 169, which gives us L equals to 13 centimeters. And we now have this cone's slant height. Using this value, we can go back to our formula for the curved surface area, and we can state that this area is equal to pi times 5 times 13. Now, if ever we weren't allowed to use a calculator in a test, then I'd suggest writing this final answer as a multiple of pi. In other words, I'd say that 5 times 13 is 65, and so I'd state that the curved surface area is equal to 65 pi, and that would be 65 pi square centimeters. But assuming that we have access to a calculator, then all I'd have to do to find this curved surface area is plug 65 times pi into my calculator, and in doing so and rounding to three significant figures, I find that this area is equal to 204 square centimeters. And we're done. We've just found this cone's curved surface area. Okay, let's see how to find the total surface area. And I'll write that underneath, total surface area. Well, just as I said when talking about this formula here, the formula for the total surface area is nothing more than the curved surface area plus the area of the disk at the base of the cone. That's this pi r squared here. And so if I copy that formula, that's area equals to pi r squared plus pi r l. We've already seen that pi r l is equal to 65 pi. And so I can write that here, that's 65 times pi. And so all we really have to calculate here is pi r squared, where r, remember, is the radius of the disk at the base of the cone. So it's equal to 5. And so this becomes pi times 5 squared plus 65 pi, which leads us to 25 pi plus 65 pi. And now gathering these two multiples of pi, we have 25 plus 65, which is 90, so that's 90 pi. And if we didn't have a calculator, we could stop there. The total surface area of the cone is equal to 90 pi square centimeters. And of course, if we do have access to a calculator, then all we do at this stage is plug 90 times pi into our calculators and calculate. And in doing so and rounding to three significant figures, I find that this cone's total surface area is equal to 283 square centimeters. And there we go. We now know how to calculate the curved surface area as well as the total surface area of a cone. And that's it for this tutorial.